Oh, hey there. So I've wanted to make a game for a while now, and this is my latest attempt. What I'd like to make is a 3D platformer collectathon genre of game, similar to titles like A Hat in Time, Donkey Kong 64, and just about every 3D Mario game. I haven't fleshed out too many specifics for game mechanics or world design or UI or general look and feel. Look, as long as I make a dude run and jump and pick up shiny objects, I'll consider that a success. Let's just make things one step at a time for now. I do at least have a protagonist in mind. You see, when my brothers and I were growing up, our dad was also learning a thing or two about game development. He and my older brother created a character for a game. Fast forward to modern day where my brother decided to just randomly whip up with some freaking awesome concept art for him and I decided he would make the perfect character for my next project. Introducing Pineapple Oscar, a spunky fruit who wears a tacky button-down shirt who can't stop thinking about the 90s. The perfect character for a run and jump kind of game. So, after spitballing a couple more ideas with my brothers, writing a simple game design doc and whipping up a base mesh for Oscar, it was time to start building a game. For the game engine, I'll be using Godot. If you haven't heard of it before, I suggest you look into it. Godot is a powerful open source software that's been getting a lot of attention as of late. I started by creating a new Godot project and putting together the player using Godot's kinematic body node as a base. I then slapped on a collider and imported Oscar's model. After that, it was time to start writing scripts. Luckily, I had already experimented with writing a simple 3D character controller in another personal project. Most of the scripts I could copy over, which gave me a great base to start with. Next, I set up a camera controller script that would follow the player model and rotate around them at an offset. And finally, I created a simple test world for my player to walk around in. Here's how it looks so far. As you can see, it's not too exciting yet. All I can do is run and jump, but I suppose that's more than some games have to offer. A coding concept that I've found to be very helpful when building a game like this is to set up a state machine for your character controller. There are many great tutorials out there for this concept, but the basic idea is that you assign a state to your character, and that state determines which scripts will run for the player at any given time. For my player, I set up a state machine that will determine the player's motion while they're on the ground, and another for the air. This is a great way to keep your code organized, and it's incredibly simple to expand upon. I will be referring back to this state machine each time I add a new movement mechanic to the player. I also spent quite a bit of time trying to determine the right collider shape for my player. Typically developers will use a capsule collider for easy player motion, but I wanted to see if a cylinder collider would be practical. A player has a tendency to slip off a ledge when using a capsule collider because the collision with the floor is past the slipping threshold. Whereas using a cylinder collider would make it so that there is no slipping point for ledges. Unfortunately, cylinder colliders have a really tough time with small lips or steps, so for now I'll stick with a capsule collider as my base. I took some time to add debug vectors so I could see the velocity of my character visibly. There's a great tutorial for how to do this in Godot by Kids Can Code. I'll put a link in the description. All this running and jumping on stationary objects is fun and all, but what if those stationary objects were moving? <laughs> I was able to get moving platforms working by using the kinematic body node and using a simple script to make them follow a path object. Eventually I'll be using animation nodes instead, but for now they seem to be working, so we'll leave them be. You can also see a bug in this version of Godot, where my player's kinematic body is not following the moving platform one-to-one. -one. There's slight movement that's more obvious when the platform is moving quickly. Luckily, this is fixed in Godot 3.4, which I'll be updating to shortly. I also spent some time trying to make some sort of hover or elastic platform, one that would spring a bit when you land on it. For this, I tried using a rigid body node, but there are way too many issues with these platforms right now. I probably won't put them in an actual level, but I like the idea, so I'll keep them in for now. And with that, I have enough building blocks to start putting together a test level. I took a lot of inspiration for this little test world from the secret levels in Super Mario Sunshine, the Time Rift levels in A Hat in Time, and Fall Guys. 
This should be a nice level to refer back to when I need to test movement mechanics. But yeah, I think this is a good spot to wrap up my first ever devlog. I hope this gives you a bit of insight on my thought process when making video games. And if you're excited to see more of this project, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to keep making these logs as long as people are interested in seeing them. Overall, this project has been a blast to work on so far, and I can't wait to see how far it goes. See you in the next log.